All right, let me unmute a few people, especially Carol. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming tonight. We have a little bit of a um, change in the way this is running tonight. Unfortunately, um, Maggie and Joel had something else they were having to do tonight. So they asked um, Mark and I and Brian Heffernan to step in as uh, the interviewees. So we were delighted to do that. And I think you'll find that there's a lot you don't know about Carol, yeah. but after tonight, there'll be a lot that you do know. I think you'll really get to know her. Um, let me just first start by saying that I've known Carol, I figured it out today, for 35 years. Oh my gosh. 35 years. Wow. No, we're not old, we're just really, really, well, really been around a while. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're well seasoned. Well seasoned, yes, yes. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. But uh, yes, Carol was one of the first people I met when I started at Parks and Recreation. And she has always been a great friend of the special needs program. And we have had some really, really, really funny, times in our life we sure have some we can tell you about and some we can't and some we can't but yep. uh i think that uh, you're going to enjoy the evening we will have some time for questions as we go along but why don't we start with our first question that will be asked by our guest host mr b Hef. thank you karen you're welcome Hey, Carol. Hey, hi, how are you? Good. Um, my first question is, do you know why your name Carol? And is there a story behind your name? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Um, actually, my name is, yeah, it's Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, but I just go by Carol. So I don't know the family history of that. I should. Yeah. Maybe try to find that out sometime, Ben. Maybe you, you want to share you know. your, your middle name with us? My middle name is Kennedy. Uh, all, my mother's maiden name was uh, Francis Kennedy, and all of us have the same middle name in my family. We're all Kennedys in the middle. Well, that's a good story. Yeah, that's a good story. Thanks, Brian. That was a good question. That was a good question, Brian. So I'll be like, jump in here and say that if someone asked me that question, I truly do have a story because my brother and sister both said that when I was born, they got to name me and they oh. both wanted to name me after somebody from the Mickey Mouse Club. So if I was a boy, I was probably going to be Cubby and Susan's best, you know, favorite Mouseketeer was Karen's. So that's how I got mine. But anyway, let's get back to you, Carol. Tell wow. us a little bit about your childhood, uh, like where you grew up, what schools you went to. Just give us a little overview about you as a kid. Well, I grew up in Milton on the South Shore, and I went to public schools all through Milton. I graduated Milton High School. Um, at the time, they didn't have many uh, leagues and sports for uh, girls, but I did play field hockey and basketball and a little bit of volleyball. Uh, but Milton was a great little town. And the one thing they did have was baseball. So I used to go down with the guys and play on the town field, which is a big field, um, and play baseball with the guys. So I had a good little childhood there in Milton. My, uh, I'm the oldest of four. My, I have three, there's three girls and one boy in our family. That's so I'm the top dog. You're the oldest. You're the, the, oldest. the boss of the family. Yep. 
Good. My, babe, my brother Patrick is the he's the baby, so we refer to each other as the bookends. So he had three big sisters telling him what to do. Yep, he did. He certainly did. Um, do you have a favorite memory of elementary school? Boy, I don't even have a memory of elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a while ago, but you know. Wow. Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, I'll have to think about that and get back to you. But I, All right. don't think I remember um, only. One of the one, 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 it wasn't my favorite, but it's something that's carried with me all these years. We used to have to walk to school. So uh, the elementary school that I went to was on the parkway. And my mother would dress us in these snowsuits that you could barely move. So in the winter time, um, anytime I had to overdress because of the weather, it always brings me back to those days of walking to school in a, in a snowsuit with zippers and scarves and gloves and oh, it was just too much for me. <laughs> but yeah, that, I, maybe it wasn't a favorite, but it is a memory I do have of elementary school. Did you have to walk to school uphill both ways? Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. It was a good little walk though. Yeah, back in the old days, everybody walked to school. Oh yeah, the, of course the, you did. The, yeah. the, um, and then when you got there, you the had norm. to take all your clothes off and then go home, you had to put them all back on. Oh, man, yep. Um, one of the questions that Brian had, um, added to his list was, did you know any kids with disabilities when you were growing up? I did not, but I'll tell you what happened. My, uh, my brother is 20 years younger than I am. My mother was 46 when she had my brother. And at the time, that was a risk. And we weren't sure if uh, Patrick was gonna be a top-notch functioning crazy man like he is today, and he certainly is, but when I went through high school, um, I went with a group of people and we volunteered in East Boston at the industrial school for, um, wasn't Special Olympics at the time, but I think there was, it, it almost reminded me of, um, that's sort of Special Olympics. And ever since then I've been, playing around with the Special Olympics and meeting special athletes. And it's funny how just yep. one little thing can lead you down a, a different path. And yep. we're glad that you did. Yep. Um, I was gonna ask you a question, but I can't remember. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Um, you mentioned something about not being able to play like varsity sports. Yeah. Um, because you are a girl. Um, for those of you that maybe don't remember this, way back in the day, girls were not allowed to play sports in varsity. And yep. um, in 1973 or 74 is when they passed Title IX to give women, girls, the ability to play varsity sports. So, yeah, yeah. you know, um, you guys take it for granted these days that, you know, you can do whatever you want, but in the old days, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, I did play basketball and we played basketball with six players and you only could go stay on one half of the court. Cause so girls were half, so fragile. They couldn't run yeah, the whole court. It, right, <clears throat> so we can only play um, offense for one half and defense for another. I, re Aaron, Iowa State, what? I remember my aunt, who's a nun now, she told me the same story when she was younger yeah. and she loved basketball. I couldn't believe yeah. it. She said they could yeah. only play half court. It blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. We were, we were yeah. cream puffs. We couldn't Carol, do did it. You, yeah. Did you like the offensive side better or the defensive side better, Carol? Of course, I like the offensive side better because I used to throw it up from half court. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Well, I hope you get yeah. to tell us about your refing days tonight too. So I'll let Carol. Oh, I'll yeah. let Karen leave. That was the next question. 
And oh. so go ahead, tell us about refing. Well, I started refereeing basketball for high school and uh, yep, high schools. And then I moved up to colleges and that meant when you did colleges, you had to travel. So high schools, I could do four or five games a week, but colleges, if I had to go to University of New Hampshire or something, I'd have to travel up and come back. So you could only do one or two a week. Um, but it was a good little side job for a lot of people. And the season would run, they started earlier in November and it would go right through February. So I, I had some good milestones with basketball. I got to do the state high school finals twice, um, once wow. in the garden yeah, and once in Worcester. And my experience in the garden actually, um, it was funny, I just started looking at old pictures and I found some old pictures uh, that Sheila Butts had come in to watch the game and she took some pictures from the stands. Oh, and wow. I actually did the game with Fran, Fran Toll. She and I did the game at the Boston Garden. So that was that old creaky floor that they had years ago, <laughs> all those dead spots. <laughs> The old creaky floor, the old oh, building. Oh my God, yeah. I don't think you realized how many dead spots were on that floor, but there were many, many. But well, that was fun I to used do, to, basketball. I used to bring patients from Spalding Rehab to games. Oh yeah. And we had yeah. to go through other buildings, up elevators, through a building, up another elevator. It took us about a half an hour just to get to our seats, which really weren't seats. It was just an open spot because there was no accessibility in the old garden. It right. was crazy. Right. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, Cal, when did you come to um, Newton Parks and Recreation? How did that all happen? Well, I started working part time. Um, I think my first year was in 1974. And I started um, refereeing uh, volleyball games. And there were, and I used to work nights and weekends at Cabot basketball court down there running the games. And there was an opening and I applied and I got the job. But the job I was working at the time before I got the new job was I worked for New England Merchants National Bank doing the states and trusts. What? And the, yep. And when this job came up, I couldn't get out of there quick enough. I, so, I can't yep. even imagine you in that position. Yeah, the states and trusts. And I worked with, uh, and, and the, the worst part about the job was you had to dress up all the time. Oh my God, it was terrible. <laughs> um, it was just awful. And when this job came up, I just said, love y'all and cleaned out my desk and left. So, uh, uh, yeah. That is something. I'm sure I could barely make ends meet, but I couldn't get out of Boston quick enough because I used to have to take the train every day to go to work. So you so, lived in Milton when you started in Newton? I did, yeah. And then um, a bunch of us all moved. We moved out to Framingham to a house, we all rented a house out there and that was way too much of a commute. Um, so I moved to Newton and when the job came up, I was already here. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was, those were fun times. And at so, that time you got paid, you got paid $7.50 for a three and a half hour session. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I think somewhere if I look, I have my first Newton paycheck. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I kept that because that was so special. It was so special. So at the time, the mayor was Mayor Mann. Uh, oh, yeah, Mayor Mann. Yeah. I bet some of yeah. the athletes remember him. Yep. Yeah. And the first commissioner that I worked for was John Penny and um, Jim Murphy uh, was the deputy commissioner. And then so you uh, were Jack, there before Fran. Yeah, a little you bit were before, there and then, before and then she Fran came and yes. did her internship, right? She did. Yep, she did her one year internship uh, and left like forty years later. Uh, <laughs> yes, she was hired also by the city for one year for internship, and another position opened, and they gave it to her. Wow. So yeah, it's it's quite the history in the in the department. It's, it's almost one of my favorite lines is I want 
went to work one day and 25 years went by. I mean, it's, it's yeah. been that, that great of a job. You know, you just never, never, ever done the same thing twice. It's always been a lot well, of fun. How about Brian? Can you ask your next question? Mm -hmm. Except I can't find you now. Where'd you go? There you are. Really? When I Googled you, I found a 2018 Twitter shout out from Mayor Fuller, speak about males. We thank you for making the final text of part of the Boston Marathon route that goes through Newton. What did you have to check? For the Boston Marathon? Yeah. When it came through the city? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that was quite the undertaking. Um, but they all, they have, um, the roadways really had to be checked carefully for any kind of potholes and tree work. Um, and we met with police and fire and put a big plan into place. Um, but then we, it depended on the weather. So if it was a real hot day, we had to get fans out on the roofs. And you have to start to worry about the, the uh, spectators too. So for, Year, the first year of the Mayor Fuller's um, uh, first marathon, it was pouring, pouring cold rain. And she decided that she'd open up City Hall. So we had to open up City Hall that day. So some very was fond that the, ma of, the marathon, was that the marathon Mark Kelly ran? That it was. certainly was. Yeah. It was a great ah! day. It was. Yeah. It was, remember Mark, that how cold and raw that day was? It was the coldest, windiest, wettest marathon yeah, in ever. history. Yeah. I, pick, I pick winners, Carol. I pick winners. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But, and we all ran out because the mayor, everybody in the building, we knew when you were coming and we all ran out. Do you remember seeing us? I don't remember a lot of that day. You could only see about 10 feet in front of you. That's one thing I remember. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all ran out of the building and ran out to see you because we, we're talking to everybody who was along the route and we knew just about when you were going to be there. So well, even so, if there was a pothole, you couldn't see it that day. That's right. for sure. So yeah. that's one thing that you do as part of your job, but what else do you do as part of your job, Carol? And how has it changed over the years? Well, the, the main focus since, and I've been at Crystal Lake since 1982, if you can believe that. Um, that certainly has changed over the years, which is so much fun for me, as you guys know, is the camps all come uh, every day, which was just a great, great experience for us. And we, we um, have hired, we, at the time, we hired more lifeguards, trained them better, and we just had a, a really good program. But the highlight of everybody's day was seeing the camps walking down the hill. And we could see you across the street, right across the lake, walking from uh, Mason Rice. And I was trying to remember the years, Karen, maybe you can, where we couldn't go to Mason Rice. We had to go to Angel School. Do you remember that? Yes. Uh, um, well, I wasn't there then. There was one year we had to go to Brown. Yeah. Only yeah. one I summer. I remember going to Angel. But yeah, okay. Mark was there when you had to go to Angel. I think Zoe worked that summer. So you took a bus, Mark, did you? Yeah, we took buses from Anger. Um, trying to think what other school we were at. Uh, um, you were yeah. at um, Zervis once, weren't you? Right, we took buses from Zervis as well. Yeah, yeah. because the beginning oh, of I'm, the- That was Zervis. I thought it was Anger. But the, the beginning of the program of the Camp Echo Bridge, I think they were housed in Bowen School. I think if you're I right. Correctly. Yeah, I think you're right. That was back in the in Mark Light's days. That's way back. Um, he yep. ran that camp. Yep. Yep. So, when you started working there, it was a while until the special needs program started. So that was what 1978. Uh, that what yes. it was, or 80? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 78. Okay. 78. Yeah. So you were there so, a few years before. 
I was there in 80, I started in 82 at Crystal Lake. I mean, I was working in the department, but I didn't take over Crystal Lake until uh, 1982. So did Camp Echo Bridge swim at Crystal Lake back then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But not Great. on the scale that it is now. No, nothing is no. like it is nothing. now. Yeah. Things have definitely changed. Yeah. Um, so you also, I remember back in the 90s, I believe, you had a really special job. And that was taking care of the deer park. And I bet yeah. most people in the city didn't even know there was a deer park. Do you want to tell us yeah. about that? Well, it's the deer park was located up off of Cam and Pond Parkway, and it was part of the Webster Conservation Land. And Mr. Webster, who owned the property, um, turned it over to the city at no cost, with the stipulation that uh, there would always be deer on that land as much as possible. So uh, he turned it over with, I think there were eight deer, white-tailed deer on the property, so they kept them. But he also had a big chicken coop, which was really a monumental sized building. Um, so they, they removed all the chickens, but they were having trouble getting someone to take care of the deer properly. So uh, the mayor asked, the commissioner at the time, which was Russ, I believe, um, if he could send somebody up and they sent me and I was there till the last deer passed away in uh, 2010. So wow. I went up as high as 35 deer there and then down as low as the last two that were there. So th these deer lived a long, nice life. Um, they weren't free, of course, but they were fed every single day. And I used to be able to take groups of kids up there and uh, throw carrots to them. I can remember taking Debbie Cass and uh, the preschool. And I had pictures of that. Um, we drove up in our little van and out came the kids and everybody walked into the deer park and we sat there on the hill and watched the deer. Yes, Carol, so, I remember that field trip. I remember doing yeah. that with you. I yeah. worked at camp yeah. that this summer. Yeah, and that was preschool. Remember that, yes. Christina? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Philip Jassett was on that trip too, if he was on. Philip Jassett was yep. on that trip. And he had just broken his leg and he was in a wheelchair when we had to do that. <laughs> I remember well, that. The last, the last year passed away in 2010 and the Conservation Commission decided uh, that they weren't bound by the deed any longer. So the land has been sitting there, but the house, I don't know if you can remember it, Christina. Um, where we used to pull in that driveway has all been redone uh, and honest to God if you've ever seen a house change you should see this house but um, the property got so overgrown uh, that they were trying to do something with the property at the deer park which is about 10 acres so they had to they the city rented a herd of goats and they let them live in the park for two months for uh, two it was two months and they ate down all the vegetation and then the owner came and picked up the goats and off they went the way to do it naturally yeah. so um, people were just, so used to, people were so used to driving down here upon parkway seeing deer that they started to call saying why are we seeing goats <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, i just cool. want to interject a moment there seems to be some infighting on the chat. I'd really like to stop that right now. Stop chatting. Let's just focus on the interview. If you can't do that, then maybe you should leave the meeting. So, stop me, Karen. So no more, wow. no more infighting in the chat. Karen, okay, stop so, me. no, I know, I know. So I do have some photos. It's gonna yeah. take me a minute to find them. Um, so if you guys want to hold on a sec. Can I go to Chris? Oh, never mind. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. Let me you find the photos.
Uh, did you want to go with somebody, Mark? Well, I was going to say, if it's going to take some time, you can go to Chris Britton wanted to get in there, but we can do it right after the photos. Okay, here we go. We'll just open up. Where is it? Oh, here we go. All right, let me start at the top here. All right. Oh, yeah, Beverly. I don't know if some of you may know Beverly Owen. Oh. This is when she was playing basketball with, and Carol was one of the coaches of the, the point setters when they first yeah. started. It's one of my favorite pictures. It's a great picture. Oh, God, one yeah. One of the things I like looking at all these old pictures is all the different hairdos. Carol was definitely going short those years. That must yep. have been the 90s. Yeah, was. And then here we have Carol doing something that I hope that she'll tell us a little bit about. Right. I was fly fishing on a trip to Montana. Um, so when you wade into the water like that, you go with a guide uh, who shows you exactly where to, to cast your rod. But Right where you're here on the on his right side, you'll see a stick in the water. Can you see the stick? See uh, the, right here. The, right there. Yeah. See that? Yep. That that is to move the snakes away. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Was, all right. I was halfway through the trip, and I all of a sudden remind you know I said to myself I should ask him what that stick's for, and that's what he told me. So this, the, the snakes travel on top of the water and sometimes they come over to see what you're doing and he just gently moved them away. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was quite the day. Where was that, Carol? That was in Montana. And I, I'm looking at my cast. Uh, that cast is called the Double Hall. And to this day, I still have not mastered that cast. And I had the best of the instructors, including Joe Mulvey, it takes me down to the lake at least twice a year trying to teach me this cast, and I've never learned it. Well, you could have fooled us. It's a great picture. It looks like you know yeah, what you're doing. Ah, oh, there you are. The, that one is at Yellowstone. That was at the Yellowstone Ooh. River. Yeah, that was a great trip. I, I did some big traveling with this group. I don't know if I put in the real women picture. Did I put that one in, Karen? Yeah, I think it's in the next uh, yeah, batch. That was the name of the group that I traveled with, the real women. And we would we went to Belize and Costa Rica and, oh my God, the Bahamas. But I have to say the best trips I took were in the United States at Jackson Hole and anything to fish in Montana is a great, it was always a great tick. Plus, uh, fishing in the ocean. In that. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And you can see that was in the fall. We, I always tried to fish in September. Um, but there's such a difference between, you know, like a river fishing and a ocean fishing because I swear to God with the ocean fishing, you catch the same damn fish twice. I mean, they're <laughs> stupid. But the trout in, in the Snake River, this was on the Snake River. They're a very smart fish. So to catch one, that's all I ever had to do was just catch one and I could go home. You know why they're smart, Carol? Why? They, they go to school. They live in schools. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you I go. had to give you that one. Now, this is a great picture, except I, can't, I don't know how to make it right side up. I don't, but, I don't know how to do it either. But, but here's is, Fishy Fishy. We know this girl in this hat. Is she on here tonight? She is. Ruthie, I, I was looking for her. I didn't see her. She is. I was hoping she was going to be. I don't know how to turn that. Yeah, I think I have to have it like as an individual picture and then yeah, I could yeah. edit it. Yeah. Ruth, do you remember that picture? Yeah, that I remember. Where was Ruth, that? You... Hooten Pond, maybe? That was at Crystal Lake. Oh, was it? Crystal oh, yeah, Lake. Oh, yeah, the pizza party. Yeah, it was a well, pizza of party. Of course, right. it was a pizza party. Yes. <laughs> it's always a pizza party, isn't it? It was a pizza party. Yeah. yeah it was. And how old do you think you are there? 
12? 13 maybe? 13 12, maybe? 13? Yeah. Oh, 12. maybe you were a teenager. Yeah. 12, 13, well, that 12. is a great picture. Uh, let me see. I think I have a couple more. Ruthie, is that your mom with you? Yes, yes it is. Oh, hey, hey, mom. Oh, these are the same ones. Okay. Oh, cute. Look at, huh? Sweet. No, Looking where's for pictures, the... Huh? Oh, wait. I, no. I know. I okay. got to find um, this one. Okay, so this is from research from Brian Heffernan. Look at what? that great picture. Oh yeah. my God. The white van. Yep, that was taking uh, the mayor's office out to, to look at the uh, marathon route the first year that they were in, in administration. So we all piled into the van and I drove them down the marathon route. Yeah, that was fun. That was a great van. And then oh. this says the, the post on Village 14, Carol was praised for her wonderful supervision and training of the lifeguards. Carol is always quietly behind the scenes. Quietly? Who, who wrote this? Behind the scenes, whenever there's work. any activity <laughs> organized <laughs> for Upper work. Falls, Greenway, or Emerson Center. Carol yeah. is a crown jewel of our city. Crystal Lake is one of our favorite parts of living in Newton, and Carol makes it so. Carol rocks, and we hope the whole city knows it. Wow. What great nice. tributes. Yeah. Now, Brian, nice. mm -hmm. Brian Heffernan needs to jump on and tell us about this post. Okay. Um, I, found, I found this bio looking up a article for the Patriot Lesser, uh, which is, I also found a 2019 Patriot Lesser article about a, oh, that's something else. Okay, I found this on the internet. For all, for all of the fall, and you, can, falls, yeah. you can see closely on the squirrel's eye, the name of Carol. Yep. Right here. He put Carol, yep. the artist put Carol's name he did. in the drawing. Yes, he did. Yes, he that did. That is something else. Yep, that's a big poster they made. And I actually have one. I can't of them. see that, uh, your name. I can't see your name. It's very hard to see, yeah, but I'm seen. pointing at it. It's right above the eye. You'll have yeah. to take our word for it, Chris. Yeah, it's there, so Chris. That's a beautiful uh, poster. Yeah, it is. Is that Echo Bridge? It is. That's Echo Bridge. Wow. Yep. So they, they have you ever heard of the Feast of the Falls? You know where that oh, is? The, the, no. It's the aqueduct. Yep. And it's 500 people eating outside. And it's all served oh, wow. by us. Oh, just, yeah. And so it starts in Newton and ends on the Needham side of Echo Bridge. And it's just, it's a crazy day, but it's a wonderful, a lot of fun for people. Well, it sounds like yep. great fun. That's, that's Jerry Riley and those guys. All right. So, Brian, do you have a, a last question for Carol? Yeah, that's Carol? what I was going to say. Oops. Okay. I also found a 2019 Patriot Lesser article about a bald eagle at Crystal Lake. Can you tell us about that? Bald eagle? Yeah. Yeah. That uh, just all of a sudden appeared one day and it sat over in the pine trees. And I just texted one person and 19 people showed up um, because of travels. And what they do is they fly from the tree, they'll watch the water, and then if they see a fish come to the surface, they'll swoop down and take the fish. And I was told by many people that it happened, but we, I didn't get to see it, but it, it was a beautiful fish. I mean, uh, a beautiful bird. My God, it was a big bird. I used to see them when we were fishing in, in uh, Wyoming and Montana, but to see one in Newton, that was pretty special. Well, Brian, you came up with some really cool questions. Yes, you did. I think we do have some people that have some questions for you, Carol. Okay. Are, you, are you allowed to take questions? <laughs> yes. yes, of course. 
I think I've been watching too much West Wing. Um, All right, yeah, Chris. Have you been watching West Wing? Yeah, the old ones. Yep. Hi, Chris. Oh, you have man. to unmute, hon. I, 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 I've known Carol since uh, horseback riding in uh, 1979. Ooh, That's man. the first did, time I met you, Carol Stapleton. Did you yes, horseback did. ride over in Weston? Yes. The one in 79? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you I think, guys are both been around a long time. Yeah. Oh, I've known her. I've known her. I've known her for a long, long time. Long, long time. Yes. And, and, so, and, 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 and I, and I, and, 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 and I went to Camp Allen. We, I went to Camp Allen. I, 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 I've known her a, a couple of times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now that Stella, I'm 56 and a half, no, 56 years old. I, I, but, but I was only four. I was only 14 and a half and 15. Through all my teens, I've known her, and through all my 20s, I've known her for a long, long time. Yep. Long, yeah, long time. Chris. Thank you. Oh, also, also, she showed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Sergeant Camp, she showed me with the eight track tape Be Free by uh, Loggins and Messina. She used to oh, hear, right. she used to like to hear me sing. Get, get, I used to sing the guitar at Camp Allen and sing it, it at Sergeant Camp. And Sergeant Camp, yep. Yeah. That was, Thanks, that's a great Chris. song, Chris. Boy, you brought back memories with that song. What song? Be Free. That's a great song. Uh, oh, well, 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 well that, that, that's the eight track tape you were sh teaching me, something yep. you were teaching I mean, me. In the in, you're right. Yep. I was in that's 10th a great grade. Time. I was in 10th. Yep. Thanks, Chris. I bet there are many people on this um, Zoom that have no idea what an eight track tape is. <laughs> but we will assure you it was a method to get music to the masses. Um, let's see, who else would like to ask Carol a question? How about Philip? Hi, Philip. Yes, um, I have a question with Coyle um, about the email, the picture of Nurture Park to Rock to the party. So when, you know, when your first time on Nurture Park to Rock um, part of this party? Do you know <laughs> when your first time? Carol, do you remember your first holiday party? Holiday with, party. Wow. With, well, the first I'll tell holiday you, party? it was a lot smaller than the ones now. Yeah. It was at the, yeah, it was at the Hibernian Hall. So the, 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 I have a question. Uh, when, uh, when your first time? Thanks, Philip. Gerald, can you remember what it must, Pat Pellegrini must have been there. Oh, my God. Oh, He's yes, the one who yeah. started it. Yeah, it was at it was at the Hibernian Center. Yeah, and it was from the children uh, Nonantum Children's Christmas Party Association. Yeah, he used to come right. to my office and say, "Okay, use guys, we're gonna have this. Use guys, use guys." Right, and, and then I was trying to remember first times of things because I knew oh, someone I was gonna remember. ask. I can remember the first banquet that we had. All right, tell us about that. Well, it was on the second floor of Tony's Villa on, on, uh, in Newton, Upper Falls, I think. And we had um, the guy who's the coach of the Celtics now, the general manager, Danny what's his Ainge. name? Danny Ainge. He was the guest speaker. And there was the whole total of the whole night, there was probably 40 people, if that. And now well, I there remember is that. I went to that one, but I think there was one before that at the Elks Club. I think okay. Rick had one just like for the Celtics maybe back in the day. I don't yeah, know. You're right. I think you did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We, yeah. One thing I'll say, Carol, we do know how to throw a party. Yes, we do. And we've always been known for that, Karen. Always have been known for that. For sure. Brian Gibbons, right, do you have a question? We... I have two questions, but I can let Karen, I can let Carol finish first, what she was going to say. Go ahead. Uh, so how, how did you get involved with Newton Park and Rex? How did I get involved? Yeah, like by which, like get enrolled, I mean, to become a program coordinator like you are, like a special person like you are to have, have wonderful people well, like I... you. As I said, I started volleyball. I started officiating volleyball 
for the, the uh, department because it had a women's volleyball league and it also had a women's softball league. So I used to umpire too. And I just worked the nights and weekends at other programs and went out and opened up buildings or turned off and on lights or things like that. And then there was an opening and I applied and I got the job. Great. Yep. All right, Patty, do you have a question? Hi, Carol. How are you, hon? I'm doing good, Carol. I have doing a question good. for you. How long have you been, you been living in, um, in Newton? How long have I been living in Newton? Yeah. I think since about 1980. Oh, I know you, you used to live in Milton, right? Milton, yes. Yeah. My I'm parents Milton, live in where... My parents live in Canton, not too far from there. Oh, that's right. South Shore girls. Yep. We're South, all South Shore, Shore girls. girls. Yeah. Yep. All right. Who else has a question? Chris Kuklinski. Uh, Chris. There he is, the man of the hour, Chris Kuklinski. Come on. Look yep, at sir. the picture. What is Whoa, that? Yeah. Whoa. Guess who took that picture, Carol? That's an oldie. That is an you oldie. Did. Oh, you you did, Carol <laughs> Stiverton. Wow. It's at Crystal Lake. I yeah. Think, I think they yeah, should rename it, it Carol Lake. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> How so is that, that Chris picture? in the boat? Yep. yep, that's Chris on a on a windsurfer. On a windsurfer. Oh, yeah. that was but, that was a pretty special Carol day. Was I remember there and that. She took the picture. Yeah. Yep. Because she oh, she knows it. everything about the lake. Yep. That's yeah. great, Chris. Thank you for sharing hey, that. Hey, Carol, I, I have a question for you. Go What's ahead. the best bird you ever saw in Newton? Because I, I know you're like, a big birder. The best bird I ever saw, in Crystal. No, well, in Newton, because you're oh, always you know calling favorite. me up and telling me about the, the yeah, crazy my, birds. My, you know, my favorite is the Carolina wren, but just recently I saw another belted kingfisher at Crystal Lake. Wow. See, yeah, so wow. I was very happy about that. Thank you, Carol. But you're welcome. You're the Good best. See you, Ned. All right, let's see. Who else would like to ask a question? Melanie, how about you? Mm -hmm. What is your favorite thing to do with Newton Parks and Rec? Great question. My favorite thing to do with with is being uh, is being yeah. with you guys, which is which I sorely miss seeing all you guys. I sorely miss Special Olympics. I miss camp. I miss all you guys. It'd be so great to see you. Wednesday nights at swim at Chris Lake was great to see everybody. One of the things I was thinking of since I talked to Chris and he was 14 when I first met him, I've known Forrest and Lincoln since they were 12. <laughs> so, Yikes. Wow. Yeah. So Yikes. it's and Michelle Michelson too. Yeah. Um, and is I know Michelle on, on here. I think she is. Uh Avalon, raise your hand if you guys are on here. I can't find you. There, there they is. are. See if you guys can get un unmuted. Can you guys unmute? Somebody's got to teach you guys how to do this. Michelle, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. So it's Carol, pushing a button. Know. Carol, we see these ladies at 10 a.m. for programs and they're in pajamas, but here they've dressed oh. up. <laughs> they dressed up for you, Carol. Well, they did. <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's Michelle's favorite. There's the finger. That's the Michelson finger. Yeah. Here we go. So way, 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 way. There Hi, is. Carol. Hi. Hi. Well, give me Hi. 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 How are you, everybody? Good, Carol. You guys look great. Thank you. Thank you. Are you getting exercise my, during the day? You. Are, you getting out, are you going out for walks and getting exercise? Yeah. yeah. They want golf. Yeah. And they did the fitting at 10. 10. But ah. I didn't do because it gets okay. her warm. Yeah. Michelle just had a birthday, Carol. She's getting oh, old no. like us. 
Yeah, like me too. He's old like Gus? He's yes, old. Gus, yep. All right, tell me how much. <laughs> I'm one, I'm one thick. 16? 16, I love it. <laughs> 60. So. 60. 60. Michelle, you're 60? Yeah! Oh, no! no. <laughs> you didn't tell me you turned 60? Oh my God! Wow. Okay, Happy Carol, birthday. we are old. <laughs> yeah. We are old! We are old! Holy smokes. I'm getting yeah. one of you, Carol. Wow, Michelle. you can't have to me, Michelle. Do you remember going yes. to um, uh, Fort Devens with me and yep. Carol years ago oh, playing basketball? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and we and, slept and in the bunk bed. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Not you. No, not you. It's me. Oh. And and yeah. well, yes. Ronnie used to go. Ronnie used to go to um, sergeant camp with us. Yep. Yes. Remember that, Ronnie? Oh, my word. And Carol yeah. always had her own, her own little cabin. Her own yep. little cabin. Yep, the yeah. nurse's cabin. Yep. The nurse's cabin. Yep. Yeah. All right. All the, all the uh, meds were kept in there, among other things that were kept That's in there. Right. Back in right. the day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you, Michelle, ladies. Yeah. Michelle, you... Say, say, yeah. Michelle, say hi to your mom for me. Okay, I will. Say hi, Gloria, for me. Okay. Oops, what happened? All right. Who else All is right. on? So we have so many questions. What about Lake Ave? Do you want to ask a question over at Lake Ave? Yes. Um, hi, hi, guys. hi, hi, Carol. It's me and Lizzie from, from Lake hi. Ave today. And you so, know me. You know me. I do. Yeah, you know me too. So, so I yeah. have a question for you. So, so. I've been looking at your at your Facebook, sorry, but 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 like Brian did, search you, Googled you, I I searched you and tell me tell me about Rosie and, and Lottie as as the you announced the, became a US citizens for, for, for them. It did. So yep, so, they so, were, so, they so, were so, from Great so, so who are they? they they were lifeguards for me. Um uh, and they became United States citizens and we had a big party for them. Because they, 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 because they looked like so young in in in, in the picture that you sh you showed us yep. on, on yep. the Facebook. Oh, that was that was such a special day. I think I've met them before. I love yeah. that these guys are such good investigators. Yeah, you are so, so, yeah I've been I've been listening so carefully, and you're so interesting. This is so interesting. I love this. Well, yeah, there's a there's a lot on Facebook. I, I learned how to do that correctly. Well, thank you, Lizzie sure. and Ben. We know Karen. that you're big Crystal Lake fans. Karen, yes, can we go are. to Catherine Wiley? They've been Where's not trying Catherine? to get on. Oh, there she is. Got Hi, it. Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm Catherine Wiley. I'm actually new. I've, I'm only doing the Zoom. I um, don't, I've never, I have not met you because I don't do the, you know, the park and rec, you know, during okay. like, not the pandemic time. But I actually know Carol Lee and Emma Fogg from church. So that's how I got Okay. To and you're and now part of the family. And school. And school. Yep. So that, she's the one that told me um, that. And then Emma emailed my sister. And then that's how I got to. But, but Catherine, you're part of the group now. So you're not new at all. That's yes, you right. Yeah, you are. Athlete's family. I want to introduce you to Carol Staples. And this is my housemate, Jessica Roger. Very special. Thanks, Catherine. Hey, guys, what's up? Nice to see you guys. Okay, we'll take maybe one or two more questions. Sanaz, do you have a question? Carol, Hi, girlfriend. Hey, Sanaz. Hi. I have a turn. I, I mean, uh, it was literally familiar to me when I saw Carol coming. It, uh, like when I, um, at first when I was uh, pressing the audio thing to join in, um, it was really familiar to me because um, 
because I I think I met her in the Camp Echo Bridge and also in New and South. Okay. And but you know where but you know where else we met? Do you remember the night we watched Harry Potter in the gym in yeah, Upper Falls? And it was Maggie yeah. Pickerton, yes, Brian's yep. sister. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was, that was a, odds. Exactly. Oh, wow. And yep. also one of the parties, one of the holiday parties. Oh yep. yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Mark and Karen and Andy. Yep. yep. Well, thank you, Sanad. And that was great. I wanted to say hi to Carol and um, that it's been years that I we didn't see you and I didn't see you. So I hope you're doing great and. Uh, Everyone's great. Well, they're good, and uh, hopefully that all of you are being safe with the pandemic and all that. And yeah. trying to thank, thank you, Sanaz. Thank you. Yeah. I want um, Brian Heffernan to maybe ask the last question on his list because I think this would be a good last um, final note for okay. our wrapping things up. Um, actually, can I be the second to last question? Because I want Dan to also have a question. You already did the second to last question. No, I want me to be the second to last question because I want Dan to. Do you want? Do you have a favorite quote or any advice to give us? Do I have a favorite quote? Oh, advice. Oh yeah, I do. Every day is a new day. Always Every try to remember that. Every day a is a day. new day. Yep. That's good advice. Carol, you used Every to have so new... many quotes written on your oh, wall. Still do. And you yep, on, still posted do. on your car. Like your car was covered in post-it notes. Yeah, it still is. That just reminded me of something. Carol is nothing but prepared. She's prepared for That's anything right. and everything. And her car, her old van, her Dodge Voyager, or whatever it was, was filled the with turkey stuff. baster. And we kept saying, Well, do you have this? And she'd go in her car and she'd get it. Well, we, we would try to come up with the most obscure thing <laughs> that we could think of. And she'd say, Yeah, I think I got one of those. And she'd go in the car and she'd get it. And one day, I think it was a Scott Brindley. It was. Somebody yeah. said, all right, Carol, do you have a turkey baster in your yeah. car? <laughs> and the answer was no. Yep. And now, today, Carol, do you have a turkey baster in your car? No, I, I took it out in his <laughs> honor. <laughs> You're supposed to say yes. <laughs> yeah. After that, though, I did go get one. Just to I have. I forgot about that, Dan. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, yeah. Uh, that was something else. Now, Karen, I want to the turn. Okay, just a minute, Zach. Um, Karen, Mark, I just noticed that was pinpointing me. Hold on, guys. Uh, no, I just wanted to tell Carol what a special person she is. Like you said, she was the first person to welcome me to Newton Park and Rec as well. And she's been yes. you guys, you athletes, um, you you don't know how much you're making her night tonight, getting to talk yeah. to her and ask her questions and uh, she's very cool. Do program. you remember my first words to you, Mark? Yeah, take the job. Would you please take the job? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and my first words were, you need a bigger car. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Zach, what did you have, Zach? Actual ones, I never met Carol before. Well, you, you're meeting her tonight. Oh, well, Carol, yep. Zach, how are you? So, everyone's part, everyone that, if you haven't met Carol, you will. Just wait till the yep. stand looks over, okay? How are you doing, Mark, I'm Mark, I just noticed that it's just pinpointing, like it's not even switching to different people when they're talking. It's okay. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I just yep. want to say that someone said to me the other day that they were a Renaissance person. Who said that to me? that they felt like they were a renaissance person. I did, I did, me, Chris, Chris Brinson. That's right, it was you, Chris. Well, it made me think that Carol is a renaissance person yeah, because she has that. so many interests and so many 
um, um, facets of her life. She is a bird woman. She is a fisher woman. She is a nature lover. She yeah. is the caring, most caring person for people with disabilities that you'll ever meet. She is a photographer. She is a lover of people and music and just all of the th things that are around her. She takes them in and she just puts out all this love. And we just have to be so grateful that she is part of our Athletes Unlimited family. And she's a Crystal Lake. And me too. And she's a Crystal Lake person, of course. You know, I'm part of the family. She's a female uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. That's it. That's the it. female Leonardo da Vinci. All right, guys, you can unmute. Thank yeah. you for joining Bye. us. Thank, Thank you, guys. Everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you again. Thanks, Carol Stapleton. Uh,